All right, so when you first start getting messages through Facebook from inquiring customers, your first line of defense is your ability to click through on this person's profile and check it out to see if they're a legitimate person. So this person who was the scammer was posing as a woman named Emily Wayne. And if we click through to Emily's profile, we're going to be able to see a couple different things. First and foremost, I like to click on their profile picture and see how many profile pictures they have. In this case, Emily Wayne only has one profile picture and it was posted on April 18th. So it's fairly new. This is the first sign of somebody who's a fake profile. Secondly, I go to the details and typically people have a lot of details about their life they'll have where they're from what college they went to what profession or where they work things of that nature emily wayne only has self-employed and that's pretty much it if we continue to scroll down we're going to see emily wayne's friends now another sign of something bad is the fact that there's no friends in common here typically if you live close to somebody you're gonna have at least one friend in common and me and emily have zero the last thing is if we scroll through to her feed we're gonna see how many posts she has so this is gonna give us another indication of whether or not this profile is fake it looks like emily only has one post two posts three posts and that's all that she has now some people's settings on their profile are to hide information from other people however in this case her lack of information on her profile is going to be a telltale sign that this could potentially be a scammer so first and foremost emily came through and said hello are you available for pressure washing services this immediately raised my eyebrows up i'm like no no one asked for that everyone's like hey can i get a quote where are you located things of that nature so i said hey emily what can i get you a quote on thanks for the response are you the owner of the company another red flag nobody ever asks if they're speaking with the owner of the company they just go ahead and assume that whoever they're messaging with on the owner's profile is the owner i want the front and back of the house to be pressure washed i said yes ma'am what's the address at this point i'm kind of just playing along i feel like this is fake but then i also feel like maybe there's a chance that it could be real this next text gave it away though okay i'm presently at the hospital receiving treatments for my lung cancer and i'll undergo surgery in some couple of weeks i'm hoping to come back and reside fully at the house can you take care of the job for me due to my absence so if we look at a couple different things first and foremost emily's profile has no personal information on it secondly the text that she's saying the verbiage within the text are very strange they're not like somebody who typically messages through and then thirdly anytime somebody says that they're in the hospital can you service my property while i'm in the hospital that is another red flag and i knew at this point that this person was a scammer so i messaged in of course i can okay fine let me send you the house address and get the estimate what payment method do you process with another very strange request from somebody nobody typically asks what payment you know we accept until after they've already received the quote right because what's the customer's first concern is this company going to be affordable for me are they going to be able to take care of what i need them to take care of um, within a reasonable manner with regards to the amount of money so Emily asked, what payment method do you process with? I said cash or credit card, knowing that they would probably want some type of check. So typically the people that are going to scam you are going to want you to deal in checks. So then Emily comes back with, do you also accept check as a payment method? I then responded, not typically, but for you, I will make an exception due to your condition. I knew at this point, like I had mentioned that this person was trying to scam me. So I'm going to play into everything that they're saying in order to kind of see what the scam is, if you will. So the next thing that Emily says is, thanks sir what bank do you use to deposit a check at this point emily doesn't even know the price so it's clear that this person's a scammer i said capital one would a different bank work better for you because at that point emily had looked at the post and not responded to it so i figured maybe there was an issue or maybe i wasn't giving that person what they needed in order to scam me so i asked would a different bank be better for them they said what other bank do you use i said i can go to whatever bank i need to to which they responded i want your bank name to endorse the check now what person has ever asked to send you a check and endorse it with your bank name? I've never had anybody ask me who I bank with. So then I responded Regions Bank and then they said Capital One will work better. Where are you located? So here's another thing. Emily's already agreed to pay us. We've already figured out the payment method. We discussed that she's at the hospital. She's not going to be at the house prior to us doing the cleaning. However, now she's wanting to know where we're located at to see if we can service her property. So I am located in Louisiana. However, I said I'm located in Houston, Texas to see whether or not she was going to send me an address in Houston, Texas. And wouldn't you know, she sent an address, uh, 10 110 Victoria Ridge Lane, Houston, Texas. Give me the total estimate altogether so we can process with the have payment. I believe you can deposit check yourself. So I looked at the house. The house is like relatively small. Um, so I was like, let me send like a ridiculous estimate on this. So I said, perfect. I know exactly where this is. The price to clean the whole property would be two thousand two hundred and seventy five dollars fine all perfectly okay with the price can we proceed with the payment now so like as i'm saying like 
you guys don't be gullible. Look at the signs. Like this person's trying to pay me before I go to the house. She's trying to she's trying to make sure that I have the right payment method before we've even negotiated price. She's asking me where I'm located before we've even talked about the price or anything, and we've already agreed on what the payment method is. So there's a lot of signs here that this is not somebody who's legitimate. So can we proceed with the payment? I said, of course. What's your full name that will be written on the check and the Gmail that the check will be sent to? Ben Dover, benwasha69 at hotmail.com. What's your mobile check deposit limit? What customer do you guys know has ever asked you what your mobile check deposit limit? My number on that would be absolutely zero. No one's ever asked me that. I didn't respond because I'm like, this person's crazy. (laughs) She sent me a question mark. I said, it's $2,000, I believe. Show me a screenshot of your check deposit limit. Like, dude, this scammer is like going all out to try to get me. And then I responded with, I'll have to send it to you when I get home. I can't remember my password on my phone. So are you in the hospital now? And that was the end of our text exchanges.